Hi everyone, Stepan here. I'm going to show you the final game from the first creation league. In round 9 I faced a 2200 rated opponent, uh, about my age, uh, and uh, he plays e4 almost uh, all the time. Of course I was going to play the Karo Khan, uh, and after d4, d5, he played knight d2, the main line, the classical uh, I took, he took knight d7. And here uh, I was expecting, if we get the Karpo, I was expecting several moves, but not what he played, not Queen e2. This of course is is a trick, it's a trap. If you justify the Karpov by playing knight gf6, then you get mated. With knight d6 checkmate, the pawn is pinned. So that's a trick which hopefully all of you know. So there are two moves, you either play knight df6 or e6, I went knight df6. And it's really no problem that you haven't developed your g6 knight to f6, because you, either you get to trade on e4 or this knight has to move again, so white is wasting just as much time as you are. Okay, he went knight f3, I took, took with the queen, knight f6, developed with tempo. Queen to d3, and now there are two ways to play this position. I actually uh, played both. Not, not only this position, but these positions in the Karpov. You can choose between two different setups when the queen is on d3. The setup I, I normally play is with bishop to g4, and after knight e5, bishop h5, c3 for example, and e6. This is a normal Karo Khan slash Scandinavian setup. Uh, the other setup you can go for, which uh, in this position makes a bit more sense than usual, and why I chose it, even though I don't play it normally, is g6, and basically you're going to win another tempo with bishop to f5. And your bishop is good on g7, it's really not, not bad. And this is the best way to play, it's just which position do you know better. He played bishop f4, I could have played bishop f5 straight away, but I started with bishop g7, bishop e2, bishop f5, queen b3. I played queen b6 because I would love a queen trade here, uh, I would love it if he took, I, I would never take, my queen is good on b6, but if he takes, which he did, then I have a great rook. The problem is, sometimes my b6 pawn is going to be hanging, which I had to calculate before queen b6, or which I had to consider before queen b6, but I can always play knight to d7, which is a move I want to play anyway, uh, that opens up my bishop. And here, black is already slightly better. It's simply more pleasant for black to play. My bishops are better than his bishops for the moment. My rook is open, uh, the kings are equal, and I have pawn breaks. I have e5, I have c5 played c4, both sides castled, I played knight d7, I want to open up my dark squared bishop and defend b6 and prepare c5, and here he played h3. And now there are two ways to play. Uh, I think okay, I think I chose the wrong one. I, I don't think what I did was incorrect necessarily. Uh, the plan I went for is perfectly fine and it's the most common plan in this position. But I think c5 was objectively better. Of course, he's not really threatening g4, because if, if g4 I can go bishop e4, and this seems great for me. I mean, there are two pawns hanging, uh, and if I take the knight, I just win a pawn. I can defend b7 before I do that. So this would have been great for me. So after c5, he cannot play g4. Probably play something like bishop e3 to simply defend his pawn. And now I can go e5, I think. Where after d5, this pawn can be sufficiently blockaded. Uh, it's very hard to get the knight to d6, but I can just go here and just take a pawn. Uh, so, uh, so I think this would have been great. Instead, I went for f6, which may seem strange, but in positions like this, you have to play e5 or c5, hopefully both at some point. So I was preparing to play e5, and not only that, I'm giving my bishop the f7 square, which in these positions is the safest square for the bishop, and I've played this setup in the exchange Karakan a ton of times. Uh, two years ago, whenever I would get the exchange, uh, I would go for this, f6, bishop f7, e5, and, and it's a good plan. It's a plan I know well. Okay, g4, bishop e6, rook fe1, bishop f7, I like my bishops like this. 
He played bishop f1, rook f8, normal I'm preparing e5, there are already 1, 2, 3, 4 pieces supporting e5, 1, 2, 3, 4 defenders. He played bishop to c7, preventing e5 because if my knight moves b6 can be captured, so rook a c8, bishop g3, and now I went back. Probably I shouldn't have gone back, uh, but I want my rook on the a-file, I want to pre pre prevent rook to d1, a3 and e5. I'm not afraid to get an isolated pawn because I, I want to push through with e4. Okay, so d, d, bishop e, which surprised me a bit, so f e, and rook a to d1. Uh, and in this position I could have played e4 straight away. Uh, I saw some variations in which it simply wins. So after after e4, if he plays knight d2, then I'm winning. I go e3. He has to take this. Uh, if he takes with the rook, then this is a simple win. Rook takes, pawn takes, and rook to d1. Uh, rook to d8, excuse me, where this is hanging, and after that, bishop to c3. Uh, I don't see a way to defend. Uh, and the engine agrees, this is minus 3, it, this should be lost easily. And after after e3, if he plays f e3, it's even worse, because I go bishop b2, and after knight b1, for example, I just go bishop f6. And basically all of these are weak, and my rooks are perfect, my bishops are perfect. However, after e4, he doesn't have to blunder with knight d2, he can go knight g5. And this slightly worried me. I, I was afraid of knight f7 and rook d7, stuff like that happening. And when I play rook e7, he takes on e5 uh, on e4. I mean, I was afraid, I was too afraid, unnecessarily afraid, but still. And if I go e3 here, then rook e3, rook e3, f e3, and bishop b2 should still be okay. I don't think there, there are any issues after rook to d7. Uh, but I, I don't think I have an advantage because he gets a lot of activity. But I didn't play e4 straight away be because of that, because of knight g5. So I wanted to prepare it with rook e7. Now he prevents that. He played rook e4. And here uh, I still, of course, have a good position, very pleasant position. I don't have to do anything crazy that my main idea has been prevented doesn't really matter that much. There are more ideas in this position. But I simply went for the wrong one. What I was afraid here, uh, what I was afraid of here was him playing g5 and sort of killing my position. This was impossible previously because after g5, e4, he has to play knight d2. So again, we get that variation. So I played h6. And I actually had a pawn sacrifice in mind. He played h4 and... Of course, normal moves like rook a8 can always be played. For example, he, he plays rook d6, I can go bishop e6, start putting pressure. But I had this weird pawn sacrifice in mind, which, not that it doesn't work, it's, it's, it's so far away from working that I, I just don't know why I played it or why I even considered it. And I actually didn't spend much time looking at it, I just thought it worked. So I played g5. The idea behind g5 is I want to get my bishop to h6, I want to get my bishop, other bishop to g6, and basically force his pieces away, use my bishop pair, open up the position and try to get a lot of activity that way. So of course he takes. Uh, if he doesn't take, then g5 is a good move. So takes. And now there are two ways to play. I played bishop g6, uh, after which he went rook e1, and I went a g5. Knight g5, bishop h6, which you are going to see in a second. Uh, after h takes g5, I can also take. And after knight takes, bishop g6, rook e3 and e4, or rook e1 and e4, is also a possibility. Uh, also, if I go bishop h6 here, that... I don't think it really works, because he can go rook d6, and if I take, then takes, and takes, takes, and uh, here, and here, and obviously white is better. The reason my idea doesn't work is not simply because it loses a pawn, it's because after bishop g6, and rook e1, and hg5, and knight g5, I cannot play the main idea behind the pawn sacrifice, which is bishop h6. 
And this I completely missed. If you saw my my game against Robert Zelcic, Grandmaster, in round two, actually it was also a Karpov Karokan, I lost the game because I neglected my sixth strength, eventually, and that that the game was simply over after after I failed to, to defend my sixth strength. The same thing happened here. I did play bishop h6 because again I didn't see that my sixth rank is weak. This is a weakness that's been repeating quite often and that after after this league I actually spent a lot of time looking at all of my games trying to find the, the same weakness and the same problem. Found it five more times. So this is something I'm aware of and that I've been working on for the last month and a half. My sixth rank it may sound strange but I actually do lose games because of this. So of course here he, he plays rook d6. And my idea is just absurd. My idea just gives him a huge advantage. I have ways out, but none of them are good. King g7, knight e6 check. King h7, rook e5. Should I just resign? Maybe. Almost did. I played rook a5 first because everything is hanging. Takes f4. Bishop f7. I should mention that I'm completely lost now. Uh, it's just... It's not that it's two pawns up, it's that his pieces are so much better than mine that he's going to checkmate me or win some more material. Bishop d3 check, king g8, rook check, bishop e8, c5, king f7, bishop c4. This seems like I'm retarded. If you see black's position here, it's just, who is this guy? And I agree, I just, g5 was so bad, followed by bishop h6, that I deserve to get crushed like this. Such a nice position. I actually played a position I know, I enjoy, I knew the plans, I got to play my plans, waited with e4 a move too long, wanted to prepare it, and then he blockaded that, started looking for alternative plans, and found a really bad one. This is how the game ended. He was just crushing me and all of my pieces are on the back rank. He's going to make a couple of queens. I decided to give up my bishop uh, for two pieces, uh, for, excuse me, yeah, so here. To have a rook against two pieces, but it's, it's, it's all over. There is nothing I can do. He could lose a piece, but even if he loses one of his pieces, I, I'm still lost probably. Here after king f4, I resigned. Uh, there is, just nothing else I can try, there are no more tricks. As long as, as there are tricks, I keep trying. When there are no more tricks, I stop trying. So coming back to, to the key positions, uh, here, uh, preparing e4 was probably a mistake, I should have played it straight away, and on knight g5 I just need to go for the continuation, take on b2, trade the pawns. This should be fine, I mean, he has to play rook d7, but so what? I can defend everything, it's not as if I'm losing any material. Uh, in fact, probably he's going to lose the a3 pawn. And once I did wait, and once he blockaded, I need to play normal moves. I mean, h6 is probably fine, even though it undefends the 6th rank, so probably I should not be playing it, but it's still okay. But I need to, I need to play normal moves. I need to play rook e8, for example, rook a8. Going for, for such a risky active plan, which involves a pawn sacrifice, is, is not a good idea. I mean, it is if it works. If it doesn't, it's a bad idea. I'm obviously not happy with this game. But I think it was very helpful for my training because I finally realized a recurring mistake, and that's neglecting the sixth strength. And that's very important. I think when, when you find stuff like that in your games, or when you become aware of a mistake that you keep repeating, then that's a very positive thing long term. If I'd won this game, maybe I would have kept making the same mistake. Now I'm looking at my sixth rank or third rank throughout the game, every game. Okay, uh, thank you for watching. See you tomorrow. I'm going to start covering uh, the next tournament, uh, which I played in Italy. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Stay tuned for more chess.